My great-grandfather, uh, who comes from Spain, a small poor town in Spain, uh, joined the Spanish military in the uh, 1800s. My great-grandfather, his name was Don Pascual Artaro Saiz, and uh, he was born in 1875. And he uh, joined the military uh, in his 20s, and he uh, was trained and uh, sent off to the Philippines, uh, where they were uh, basically involved in managing a political insurrection in the Philippines. Uh, he was later stationed in Yap in the late 1890s, uh, where he became uh, in charge of the prison in Yap, and the prison had Filipino political prisoners. So while he was down in Yap, he met my great-grandmother, Asuncion Cruz, a Martinez Cruz, uh, originally from the Aganya area. Uh, who had uh, traveled to Yap with her four sisters. And uh, my understanding from the family history is that they had become orphaned as a result of the great influenza that had swept through Guam, my great-grandmother and her sisters. And through the encouragement of uh, the nuns uh, who were helping them through their crisis, uh, encouraged them to go down to Yap and be part of the education system where they were basically missionary teachers. During the course of uh, the time that my great-grandfather was stationed in Yap, uh, he had met my great-grandmother and had uh, wanted to become married to her, so he had uh, sent off for his baptismal certificate. Obviously, that would take a long time for the request to travel to Spain in his hometown by ship and get back. And during that time, unfortunately, my great-grandmother and her sisters uh, tour of duty as a mission teachers uh, was finished and they were sent back to Guam via Japan. Uh, however, once she came back to Guam, I guess the, uh, the feelings still stayed strong and so she returned to Yap where she married my great-grandfather. So they were a young married couple down in Yap when the uh, Spanish-American War started and ended and as a result Spain had to sell Yap and the other islands uh, off to pay for their war debts and Germany uh, became the new owner of Yap and at that time Germany uh, uh, basically forced my great-grandfather to leave Yap. So he had some choices with his new wife to return back to Spain. Uh, he had left Spain at a time when uh, there was terrible famine and drought and the land was poor that they were on and he decided to uh, take his chance and actually go to Guam, which was now controlled by the actual victors of the Spanish-American War. Uh, he was uh, given an invitation by his wife's family, the Cruz family, to come join them. And I believe in 1901 he came to Guam uh, from Yap with his wife. And later on they had seven children and uh, developed businesses here in Guam. And so in my growing up on Guam, uh, that kind of tradition was passed on. I always had an interest to start business uh, and uh, basically have your own business and uh, be able to manage things uh, in a way that was interesting. And today, what's interesting is simply this, is that um, I was able to open up a business about 25 years ago on Guam here in the village of Tamuning which of all places, the Tamunin is a Carolinian name uh, or a Yapese name uh, for that part of the Guam. And depending on the translation from the Yapese, uh, the Tamunin settlers came from Woliai and Satawal, two outer islands of, uh, of the Yap uh, chain out there. And uh, <clears throat> they came out in the 1848, 1849 after a typhoon devastated the islands and uh, were allowed to settle there in what was once called a putgun to become tamuning. And tamuning, depending on how you, you understand it, is actually a clan name for a family from, a chief's family from Woolleye that settled in Satawal that eventually came to Guam. And the last name was Tom or Tom for it. 
and Tom could either be the, um, the float that is on the bottom of the outrigger of their canoes, or it can also mean beautiful, and Ning means place, or it means west. So it could be the beautiful place, or the beautiful west, or it could be the float to the west. Uh, we prefer to call it, maybe today, the beautiful place. Uh, it's interesting that uh, today we have a business down there, just like my grandfather had businesses, uh, and my mom's side here, and uh, my great-grandfather had business here. But it all started with a connection in Yap, and in Yap now they have a place called Chamorro Bay, and on Guam we have a place called Tamuning, you know? And uh, my co-workers that I work along with, of all things, uh, we have so many different ethnic uh, groups to be able to have the pleasure of working with, but a majority of them feel more natural for some reason, and now maybe it makes a little more sense, to work in Tamuning, which is exactly where their history and culture is from. And uh, so our managers of our operations are actually from Sadawal and Wooliai. What a coincidence, even before I even really understood the history here. My name is Michael Sigetaro Parahino Asanuma. My mother's name is uh, Luisa. My grandmother's name is Maria Celis Parahino when, when uh, he was, she was first married, and Cleo and my mother were the first born children from the first husband, Simon Parahino. Parahino was lost in the typhoon going towards Alaska. But the second marriage was Antonio Aquino. My grandmother, Uncle Leo, went there to start a plantation. You said that she was sent by the Bishop of the Marianas to Papua New Guinea to start a mission? Yes, exactly where, I don't know, from the Marianas where the boat picked them up or from Guam. I don't know, but from there. Why did the bishop send them? He wanted somebody from there because they are people that are uh, more like farmers. They deal with land and they plant coconut, and that is why he took them from there. The bishop? The bishop. Do you remember the name of that bishop? Bishop Coupe. Bishop Coupe was in Winapopi, Kokopo. Okay, he was in PNG. Um, right? Yes. Okay. Do you know why your mother and your grandmother and mother and her children went, left Guam? Do you know why they left Guam? Why did they leave the Marianas and go to PNG? Because of that plantation to open up. What did they plant? Coconut. What else? Cut down the whole place. There were bush, trees and wines and all that. 1,000 hectares. and grow coconut. So this was a copra plantation? Yes. And who did they sell the copra to? At that time, I wasn't born, but after the war, I learned that the copra goes all to CMB, Copra Marketing Board. CMB? CMB, Copra Marketing Board. And how many people from the Marianas worked at this plantation? Only them. My grandmother, my grandfather supervised the locals, the people from there. They get them to work. The PNG people? Yes. She, Nana, Manuela, Luis de la Cruz, Stato, she, 
つも結構トリックファシスクロギツパニスクニノリイオシタマソガイドスギツザエザイズナマソダロキネギビフォーデワールドマトシタシンダルンツパニスザシスースゴアホシマリアシミリアナティビダッシジョセフおいフィナップマナマラジャパンハムアコンニャムシータタマミパポンレプチナサガナインビラムタルトティザロティロティマナスタタマアヘスマガアネテプチナサガナニマニニトドイニンカノニポニポファハンプラリミッハイキュプラノリミッ私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私もっとしたぎるにしなのは、ちなぽこにゃんとどんてしてあ、あれてんぷちらさがね、ぽこにゃんぱとどいてか、クリフライン、ざぽろ、ずってんぱぱね、さたちじねしたらがぽりやまのにょらん。そうね、りじさいん、いずな、もまぐふざぽあこにゃんもぎ、わとやま。ざじんごしたと。おおいえ、ぷってしなの。じゃあ、あなたさんがに、ストリアニャに、パスニャに、ギザジャパン。あとで、ワーネ。うん、リシナのマーケティ。いや、ティシニャ、ティシニャさんが。どうがしたとね、ぴゃ、ロケプティネに、あそったは。My name is Beverly. Sophia Barton. I am a descendant of the Chamorros who migrated to Papua New Guinea from Guam via Saipan and the Caroline Islands. My mother is a full blood Chamorro, my late mother rather. And her full name is Ana Maria Namalik de Leon Guerrero, the Namalik being her mother's last name. My grandmother is Rosa Reyes. My grandmother was actually born in Guam and we found her and her, her sister on the Guam census with their parents. And,、um, but there's really no time frame as to when they left Guam to go to the Caroline Islands because it was there that she married her husband, Vincente de Leon Guerrero. My father is Kenneth Mitchell Penrose. My mother, having previously married and having six sons with her first husband, Heinrich Kezer, the first 12 years of my life was in New Guinea. In Rabaul, which is, was, was once the、um, German headquarters of the then known German New Guinea, and which I'm sure the c h a m o r o s in. In Saipan and the Carolines are aware well of that,、um, you know, because they come also under German rule until 1914. That's when the、um, Australians took over and was mandated under Australian rule. But by that time, there were considerable Chamorro families, you know, settled in New Guinea for various reasons. I guess the old Saying they were always pursuing that end of the rainbow pot of gold, 
they're given the impression that you could literally pick up gold coins off the street, which we know today was certainly not true. Rebel itself was sort of unique in a sense that it was, um, it was once German administration. So it had a fusion of different people, different backgrounds. Um, so you ended up having mixed marriages between all the different ethnic groups who actually, for whatever reason, flocked to Rabaul and stayed on after German administration. Of course, there were the Chinese who were well known for their commercial interests. There were the Malayans who went there as sort of bookkeepers. And the Chamorros who went there mainly as overseers to the um, plantation owners. They sort of um, acted as a, as a go-between the indigenous people of New Guinea and the German owners of the plantations. I guess the Germans really didn't like to, to deal directly themselves with the natives of the country. Um, so, you know, they um, employed a lot of the Chamorros with a lot more, um, I guess, they, um, incentives to, to actually bring them down into New Guinea.